Mike Stell, everybody. <laughs> I'm Mike Stell. I'm Jason. I'm Mike. Joe. Harry. Joe. Clay. Jeff. Jeff. Alright, <laughs> so let's walk. So, where does the fruit from this vineyard go? Well, I hope it all goes to research, but it doesn't. Uh, so, the, this vineyard has been a, a research station since about 1880. Not always part of the University of California. Um, as part of the original Tokolon vineyard, Charles uh, uh, Crabb, who owned the, the, this, this vineyard, um, made it available to what was called the Viticulture Commissioners. They, the a group of winemakers in the 1880s, when we had the first Quattro uh, issue, uh, they did work on, on rootstocks here on this piece of property, uh, trying to solve that, that, that problem. Still belonging to Crab. Uh, afterwards, I don't know how it became this, but it, it became a USDA research station around the turn of the century. So there's photographs of the USDA building here. Uh, after Prohibition, USDA left. Uh, I used to think they left because of Prohibition, but I think that for some reason or other, there was some change in the funding, there wasn't any money, they, they went away. So that's nice, but that, so it, it, it sat here empty until 1950s, when uh, some of the local growers here got together and said, or noticed it, and said, we ought to make this available to the University of California, went to Washington, D.C., and, and did whatever they had to do to make it, make it that, so it became part of the university. So it's still a USDA-owned property, I don't know if they know that anymore, but uh, they might be knocking on the door if they did. Um, but we're allowed to use it as long as we continue to do research. Um, the reason this comes up is the question about where does the grapes go. The, the university says to us, this, this is a department-run facility. It's not a, it's not a university-run facility, which is kind of an important distinction. So the department is responsible for it, as opposed to the chancellor or the regents. They said, you are in one of the most incredible places in the world. You should be able to make enough money to support yourselves. See you guys later. Good luck. <laughs> so there's no money coming from there to here. Ooh. Uh, uh, so there's a, there is an inherent and constant conflict between doing research and growing grapes to sell. I, wanted, I want to send all the grapes back to Davis to have research wines made out of them. At the same time, I can't afford to do that because I need to have the grapes here. There is, there is a... There's a, another solution to the problem, and that would be that the California wine industry said this is really important, and we're gonna we're gonna support you. Clearly, our bills here are trivial compared to the amount of money that the wine industry is worth and generates every year. They have not come forward and said that to us. <laughs> so, if you ever get into the wine industry, or talk to somebody that's influential about funding research at UC Davis, please say say the good words. Well, Mondavia kicked in a bunch of money to that. They built, didn't they build, pay for they, that new facility? They over? built the building, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay for anybody to do anything in the building. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to have people. So, okay. so I, I think that when it comes down to, if I had to say one thing about what viticulture is, it is managing capacity. It's managing what, what, the, what the vines, what, what the, how much of the vines are going to grow. And, and, and I have to think about that all the time. Um, so this block right here is on 101.14. Uh, I will probably not ever plant another vine on 101.14 on this piece of, or any, in any piece of property I have anything to do with. It, it's just not a real happy rootstock. Uh, I have a hard time getting canopy on it, no matter what. And so um, I this year we, we went maybe a little early on uh, the first pass of uh, shoot thinning because any shoot that, 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 I, that I allow to stay on the vine is absorbing some amount of the capacity as long as it's there. So if I get rid of the stuff as soon as I can that, that I don't want anyway, it leaves more resources available for the ones that I do want. Okay? So I want to get this, I want to get this, oh, by the way, stop being sort of slave to Ravaz or yield pruning weight ratio. It's just hanging people up. It's yeah, I know it's presented as something that's really that, that, that that's that's a it, it's a guideline. It's something like there's not a vine. Well, I, I, it's an exaggeration, but there's but almost.
almost every vine in the Napa Valley has a yield pruning rate ratio of about three or four. Oh, wow. That's really low from what we read. Because what, these guys grow like crazy. I need it up here. We have a VSP system that, that, that most of the time we do that's putting the, getting the shoots out of the way of the fruit, right? So this idea of shading is not that big of a deal. In the, in the, in the midterm, in the close ones, it's probably not this that's making the problem. It's lateral growth. So on the very close space, on the very close vine, on the very close space vines, you capture more of the site capacity. That's why they grow more, right? It's 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 straws in a straws in a, in a milkshake. The the more straws you have in that milkshake, the faster the, the, the milkshake is going to empty. So we can think about this way, because uh, we're always not thinking about grapevines. We're thinking about meters of, of wire. We're, we're farming wire. We're not farming grapevines. On the very first day I plant a vineyard, let's say I, I, plant, I face the vines every 10 feet, and then you and then and then you went and you and you uh, took the pruning weight off off of that. There'd be hardly anything per meter, right? But if I space them every foot, they would grow almost exactly the same, but we would get 10 times as much pruning weight on a, on a, on a meter ba basis because we have more straws in. We're, we're, we're getting more out of extracting more out of the soil. As we go across here, so the more closely the vines are planted, the more completely all the resources of the, vi the soil are used, the more growth you're going to get. The farther apart, the less. That's why. So it, it, on the on the very close space one, you probably had a little lower crop because there was some shading of the buds, and so the buds were less fruitful. Probably because of laterals. I, we don't have the measurement, but that's probably what that's probably what what happened. Because we get these things out of the way. And I'm going to come through it pretty soon. I'm going to pull all these leaves out here. As soon as, soon as it sets over, all these leaves are going to come out here in this in this area on the shady side. The lower the basal. Side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we really work hard to to put the put the fruit into the environment we want it to be, regardless of this. And then around here, because every almost all these vines are too vigorous in this in this area, people are, people hedge them. And that's not accounted for in the pruning weight at all because you, that, that's shit that went on the ground. Yeah. So I'm just doing this. I'm saying, well, you know, make it, make it be what I want to do. So you guys are going to hedge these later in the season? I hope not. Oh. This is the one on 114 block. And if I get to the, if I get to the place where i got to hedge it, I, I almost will feel like I did it right. Yeah, you finally got because the vigor you needed. And so, yeah. and so we, you know, we, we manipulate the number of spurs or the number of shoots compared to what we think the cap capacity is, right? So we have to divide that overall thing to get this, every, all the shoots to be, to, to be the same. So we went through fairly, year, er, fairly er, early this year. Um, I'm, I'm happy with that. We're gonna have to go through again now, because we can, you can see we already got, you know, all these little ones coming back in here, all these right here. So we get, we get down to the place where we have our two shoots that, that for instance, we took the doubles here because we only had one, but we, we get the ones that we want, and all this stuff has, has gone away, and, and th this sort of thing has to go, has to go, because it's not what we want. We're very lucky here. We have a lot of money. I mean, the, you know, grapes here cost seven thousand dollars a ton. Where you are, I don't know, six hundred. I don't know what you could, what you're gonna uh, pay. Eleven hundred, maybe yeah, roughly, yeah. Right. Like yeah. So we have a tendency to spend the money that we make. And so these vines are very, very manipulated. You can actually get six or seven k. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's 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 the neighborhood here. They're they're yeah. keeping more than that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Napa Valley average, Napa Valley average, which is all of Napa Valley, including Polk Valley and all those sort of things, other places, is five. So Monterey area is what about three for uh, Pinot Noir? Yeah, for yeah. 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 Will you be putting the second wire on? At the top, or is this single on the top? No, that'll stay there. I know, but there, would you, is there a second one? Or? No, no, no. So the no. doubles are just for no. the lower uh, parts of the shoots. But, but, but this one will move. So here's that here's yeah. that line six that I showed you. Oh, you, you, want, you didn't see the picture. Yeah, I, I posted some pictures up this morning. Oh, okay. So these can move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So th this, yeah, this, you this, lift this them. can come up higher. Yeah. And and we we move, we'll move it later. So as you get more canopy growth, then right, yeah. right. So. We have about one percent bloom, so you stick your head in there. You'll see a uh, few of the uh, few of the clusters starting yeah, to clusters. starting to uh, yeah. the clusters. But you'll see the the bloom, the the the, the, the flowers, like right here. 
What is the variety? Oh, this is Cabernet Sauvignon because Cabernet is king where we live right here. Mm -hmm. So when you go to do How pedial samples, you said one? Did you yeah, wait for 100%? I don't even see any right now. I'll, I'll, I'll find some later, huh? When you go to do pedial samples, you wait for 100% bloom? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere in the middle? Yeah. It, it, once again, blooming. you know, it, 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 I'm more interested in yeah. learning about my vineyard, how it changes over time, than okay, being yeah, a slave to a, to a number. Oh, yeah, yeah. So nice. choose something. Be consistent about when, when you when you make the when you make the the sample, and look and see how it changes over time. And if it, if you just continue, if you're happy with the with the vines are growing, then those numbers are good numbers for you. Right. When you de deviate from those numbers, probably you're going to see something change here, and you'll know what why. So is the majority of your vineyards planted to uh, cab? Yes. Yeah. yeah. This um, another Bordeaux, but yeah. This stunted plant behind us back here—that's a replacement. You've ripped out once up in yeah. there, and it's just a younger vine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I had a question driving in. I noticed that, uh, in fact, in fact, we we're talking about even down the road, they have some vines that are planted uh, where the the cordons are like maybe 12 inches off the ground, really low like that, mm -hmm. and there's some right on your road here. Why are they doing that? Aren't we'll those hard? About that. They're hard to pick. We'll and talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so another thing going on this year is the soils are very dry, despite those, la those late rains. Um, just something that we had to be aware of and you know understand. We have soil probes uh, here that we go down to. Oh, that's what that is. The, the uh, data is uploaded to a website, and I can see that on my computer inside inside the uh, inside the office. These other things are sap, sap flow sensors that are not, not working, but they're measuring the amount of water that's going up through the trunk into the vine. And so it, uh, at times, um, uh, you can understand the plant water status that way. So when that, when that, when that number starts decreasing, then the, wa the wine's not having enough water. It, it measures that by uh, uh, a heat pulse. It, it, uh, it, it sends a heat, a heat to, to, the, um, to, the, to the xylem and then it, it catches that heat uh, 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 above that. And so the amount of time it takes for the heat to move from, from the pulse to the, to the, to the sensor uh, is uh, illustrated of, of the flow rate. Yeah. yeah. So when we were going through all these vines and, and uh, suckering them, or shooting, we also had the uh, guys flagging type of vines. And so here's a here's a Utypa, here's a, my flag for Utypa here, and here here's what the guys saw right here, this shoot right here. Uh, this just distorted, this is quite, uh, this is a fairly severe one, medium severe, and this burning on the edges is yep. a Utypa vine. Um, we'll have to cut that out now. Um, this is this is the unsolved problem in, in Cabernet vineyards, or in Bordeaux vineyards in general. You don't have Utypa in Zinfandel. That's why they're old Zinfandel vineyards, mm -hmm. and there are no old Cabernet vineyards because of Utypa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. In our vineyard, we have problems in our Sauvignon Blanc with Utypa, but yeah. not so much in our uh, Cabernet. Really? Yeah. I mean, possibly it's the Vitaminifera on Vitaminifera, but or something. It shouldn't. I don't. More yeah. Well, I don't, yeah. But right. Right. How far will they cut back on them? Will they take off part of the cordon, or? We've been taking. We the, uh, the previous manager to me would would have taken it back here somewhere and cut it off, mm -hmm. I'm taking the whole thing off. The whole cord off? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just have a well, and then, single? And then the guys are, so what they're supposed to do is, when they when they tag this, oh, they're supposed to leave you and they one. leave yeah. something there, they're going to train out next year. There is some on this side. Yeah, well, yeah. they had to either have some idea there was nothing available. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're good. Yeah. So it's, it's, just, it's just terrible. I mean, uh, we'll, 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 we'll walk around here, you'll see some older vineyards are just full of yellow flags. Mm. And you know, this is actually being fairly aggressive last year. Oh, yeah, you can see where they've cut some too. What causes the spread of Utypa? Spores come from there. The spores come from everywhere, and they they let they land into uh, pruning wounds and um, infect the pruning wound, and there it goes. 
When do you start pruning each year? Do you wait till uh, late winter? We wait till almost early spring. So March, late March, or? No, we've been doing the end of February. End but, of February. Yeah. But uh, everybody can't prune the same day. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, you got. Yeah. You know, there's some realities that say mm -hmm. that make you prune at a time where you wouldn't maybe want to. But you're hoping to get most of the winter rains done. Yeah. And this year it was very strange because we didn't have any winter rains until the springtime. Yeah, until after you <laughs> prune. So, you know, I was talking to Goobler and said, "Well, you know, what, what are we going to do?" And by the time we were pruning. It was raining. Uh, there was a lot of sap coming. You know, the cuts were, were bleeding. And I said, he happened to be here. I said, Doug, what? I can't paint anything on this thing because it's going to wash right off. Because it's well, you're okay. It's, it's bleeding. Well, I don't know. It's pushing I out instead of sucking that in. We'll have, as a result of any pick, any year, we'll, hmm. we'll have we'll have some type of strikes. And so they, those guys have figured out ways to to, to protect against you type of. But it, it, none of them have so far been very practical for us to, for us and everybody to, to really do. Yeah. I think the double pruning thing makes the most sense to me than anything else. A lot of people are doing that in the foothills, and yeah. I think our, our spring's a little bit later than yours. Yeah. So we get the rains done first. You know? Yeah, we never prune until like beginning, right at the beginning of April. Yeah. For frost protection and you type of Right. Mm -hmm. Frost protection too. Right. Mm -hmm. we, well, we, we put the frost, we, we have frost protection. So right, right now the, the, the drippers are on. I would have them on. I'm going to put them on when I leave for eight or ten hours. But uh, in, this, in these blocks, because um, I'm already worried about shoot growth here. Um, but we have the guys go through and we're checking all the systems, make sure all the emitters are working, all the filters are clean, and the lines aren't broken, the coyotes, whatever it is, because uh, we're, we're applying fertilizer starting today, and I'm going to put it through the drip system, and if the drip system is not working right, then I'm not evenly applying what, what I'm going to do. How many hours would you leave these dripping? Uh, Probably 10 hours this week. 10 hours for the whole week? So you just do one day, 10 I'm, hours? I'm just trying to get some water into the soil right now. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not worried about trying to replace any kind of ET or anything like that. I just want these things growing. I mean, if I don't get these things up, well, so for instance, okay, so here's a, here's a, here's a, here's a difference. Um, this whole thing about... So, another thing about this, this 1014 that's just been this really an unsuccessful thing for me is, if you have this kind of, if you have this sort of space in between the lines, which is in, in excess of the normal rhythm of spur positions, right? And sometimes it's worse, sometimes it's better as you look across the line. It means I didn't I didn't use the wire up, which means there's another spur position that I should have had in there, but that this rootstock was weak enough that it couldn't it couldn't hold another spur position. Mm. So there's a, there's a mistake in choosing either spacing or rootstock. One of the two is wrong. So it should have been in, closer in, space. Unless, yeah. I, in, unless I change site capacity, I can change site capacity with fertilizers and water. Yeah. So. That's what I'm going to try to do. That balance. Oh, what? Oh, this one? Yeah. Well, the, the difference between the way lines grow by variety, the raw, cabinet. Straw, I don't I, I need to slow that one down. The cabernet, I still want to, I, want, I still want to, I still want to uh, pick up a little bit. Yeah, they're like almost double what you're getting over here in terms of vigor. Look at the internal length between that one versus the cabinet. I'm not worried about the straw. I'm not worried about the straw. Even though it's probably going to be a yield printing ratio of two by the time we pick it. It's going to be great. But straw, the straw clones are known for high vigor, aren't they? Yeah. Huh? They're known for high vigor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They're doing what they're supposed to. Oh, yeah. they're, they're following the book. How are rootstocks they, are they on? That's 110R. Also. 110R, this is 101. Oh, 101, okay. Yeah. The, the north, south, east, west have anything? Sure. You get more sun. My choices, I, 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 I plant lines this way versus this way. But we, but we have solutions. So the problem with this, the problem with this row orientation here 
is that um, the afternoon sun comes in like this, and, and, and we get a lot of sunburn, and, or could get a lot of sunburn, a lot of burning. Mm -hmm. And um, sunburn's bad for a lot of things. If it doesn't, even if you don't like create raisins, you probably could have a lot less color in the fruit. It's, it looks like crap. And we haven't put it on the ground, which is not where we want to put fruit. We want to put it in. So over time, we have, and other people, I guess, you know, it's, you, you come to a community kind of consensus of whatever is experienced. But so this wire right here is the last one I'm going to use. This wire right here, which would go up, notch up here, and hold this fruit up here, I'm not going to position it. I'm going to leave it down. On this side, this this the morning side, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am going to put it up. So I'm going to end up with a, with a trellis that looks like this and kind of like this. Because these, these shoots are going to go over like that. And then they're going to provide shade. I kind of used to turn an awning or something like that over the top of this fruit. It works really well. You mentioned that in the lecture, I think, at one yeah. point. Yeah, did I? It's like some of the vineyard systems where they grow up and over. Some of the ones you said in the Central Valley they use. Right, right. Because I've noticed that's for simplicity more than anything else. Okay. Yes, yeah. So there's a bunch of deviations like that where I live at. There, mm -hmm. just north in the Campo. Right. Yeah. So that traditional one would often find that, that California one would be good. At this point, we have a we have a cross arm of maybe this 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 yeah. this wide. You have to put the wires over here. The the, the fruit would, the shoots would go up through here, and you wouldn't bother with it anymore, and it would, and, it, and it would do that kind of up, up that, that kind of. That's that's that T-top, or that's what like people call the California sprawl. But California sprawl gets used for a lot of different things. It's, it's not it's really poorly defined. But this kind of T-top thing makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it, this 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 trellis is designed designed for tractors, not for grape plants. Mm -hmm. And th that that's a problem. That's why we had to make these modifications. So every time I do this, I'm I'm, I'm not positioning this wire, and the guys are coming. Oh, I don't know. I said, come on, guys, just let's go. You're gonna make it through there. Because they, 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 um, they, all the dusting's done at nighttime, two or three o'clock in the morning. That's when they got to run, run after. Mm. No wind. Right. Yeah. You want still air. Yeah. yeah. And cooler temperatures too. And cooler temperatures. Right. So you're only going to do that extended canopy on the western side, not the eastern side. Right. So I get sun, but I don't get the hot. Yeah. Light. Maybe a more common one versus something that's pygmy. pygmy. Uh, th is, is there, is there, this is two times this one uh, in height and, wi and spacing. Uh, there are two different rootstocks, 101.14 and 110R. Um, this was planted at some number of expense, but nobody ever wanted to collect the data. So I'm stuck trying to take care of this thing with all this. Multiple rootstocks, multiple trellises, all within like. I can touch it. Um, the one, the, 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 this, the, the ones would have little white uh, paint on the end of them, or the 110R, I mean, uh, sorry, the 10114 and the 110R are, don't have any white paint on it. I don't know if we can find a place where we can see, if we, if we can see any differences at this, at this time in the way they're growing. choice or I, I make a mistake someplace, I'm going to make a mistake having too much oomph and not enough. I, I would rather manage a little bit of an excess than a deficit. It's easier to do. It's easier to remove material than it is to try to encourage more growth. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want to make it, I don't want to you know, go crazy with it. I mean, we're, we're kind of fine tuning it. We're not going to plant 11 or 3 in here. Yeah. Go crazy. But unless I really lengthen out the spacing, I mean, the way to take care of extra vigor is to lengthen out the spacing. So nobody really ever commented about it, but in the in the midterm exam, if you have, and you weren't asked to, if you have more growth than you w want, want, 
especially if you believe that you're suffering from it, let's say for you losing crop because it's excessively ve vegetative, figure out something to do with that. It's like, to me, it's an opportunity. If you have leaf area, that means you can, it's making sugar. You need to find another way to put more grapes on it for that sugar to go through. Have more clusters. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so, am, am I going to, let, let's try leaving, uh, this year in a lot of vines, everybody in the Napa Valley, all those pictures that I showed, is trying to, is trying to up the crop this year because grapes are supposedly in a short supply. Um, I don't know how that's going to work because if you're going to add, you know, one and a half times shoots, you've got to figure out where the one and a half times capacity is going to come from in order to support those shoots. But, Anyway, you can use that strategy, same kind of strategy to say, well, I, I have too much vegetative growth. Let's find a way to up the number of clusters by leaving more spurs, doubling up some stuff. You know, there are a lot, there are a lot of different ways to put more shoots on. So last year was a poor crop year because of the weather conditions. I wonder w whether we'll really have less grapes available this year. This is a good season this so looks far. To me, like this year is going to be a heavy cro crop load. Yeah. Or at least it's going to be above average. Which shouldn't that push prices down a little bit? They say there's nothing in the, there's no inventory right now. There's nothing in the pipe. Yeah, yeah. there's mm -hmm. nothing from the past, so, yeah. so the, everybody wants inventory. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, you know, wineries, the friends of my kind of say, well, we, we try to crush 1,300 tons, and we haven't been past 800 in the last three years. Yeah. That kind of number. Last year, some people even just didn't crush because of pricing and, and quality was poor. We thought it was great. Really? Yeah. We had significant improvements in quality because of the cooler temperatures for the foot hills. So. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, it was great here. We picked a, we picked a lot of. Uh, there's an Oakville. One of the really cool things of being here is being part of the community. So there's an Oakville uh, Growers Group. Uh, that just, they they try to do some promotional stuff, but also the winemakers and stuff get together in little technical meetings, and I host those here, and it's really fun talking to these guys. And be able to taste some of the wines when they're young. So last year, a lot of fruit was harvested here at 23, 24 bricks. Something that hasn't happened in 15, 20 years. When I first, when I, a lot of those uh, papers with Matthews and Anderson, the Phelps, the Cabernet Frank vineyards, vineyards, uh, um, look at those things. The we harvest was at 22 and a half. Not because we wanted to. That's when the winery was harvesting them. Yeah. So this has been a whole, whole, whole big change in style. These wines are really nice made last year I mean to me at least they are there's I think we went too far to some this is my personal deal right a little higher pH maybe a little bit of residual sugar I don't really like them that much mm -hmm. but these are really nice so in European. Auburn Auburn region we had uh, hailstorms in late April and we had heavy rains in May yeah. last year and that kind of it really it slowed down the beginning a little. yeah it really screwed up the season yeah well that rain in, that rain in May really gave us a I mean, I'm trying to almost do, I like so much what it did to the canopy, I'm trying to rain in May with the mm -hmm. pump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Now, is water pretty accessible here, too? I mean, the river flowing through a, a table must be pretty high. you got to pay PG&E. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody pays it. I don't know. <laughs> Where we stand here, all this vineyard is, is drained. So five feet down, there's there are plastic pipes all throughout this vineyard. And they're packed with gravel, and except for that one vineyard, the oldest vineyard here wasn't done yet. Really? Uh huh. And so it all drains to a sump in the corner there. That was here before you were, huh? The sump in the corner? No, I mean the piping under there. Uh, yeah, I, I was here when they did it. I was really? I was at Davis, but I wasn't. I was, you know, I, I, I've always been part of the station, but I haven't been like as as much in, in control of it as I am now. So that all that water goes to to the corner through a sump in the corner, and we pump that into the reservoir. Uh, that's going to run usually until August. Uh, this year, probably that's not going to be the case. But we do have a small pump over there that pumps a little bit of water. I'm just going to turn that on in is, a few months. Is that common in, in Napa? To huh? do that? Is that common down here? Drains? Yeah. yeah. Put drainage in? Right. So you can reclaim a lot of the water. Yeah, and also, we don't, I don't, it's, you know, uh, it's, it, it, it's another modification of capacity. Mm -hmm. I don't. It's expensive, I guess, we, with PG&E and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And do you have the water available to and you? Infrastructure. But I don't want nature telling me how to grow the grapevines. I want to tell the grapevines how to grow. And so water, that's that's the thing. I mean, th yeah. there's nothing more powerful than the way you apply water. So, I'm gonna, for instance, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to make sure these vines are in a well-watered situation until I get the canopy that I want. Then I'm going to shut the water off. 
and let the thing slowly dry down until I get the leaf water potential that I want. Then I'm going to start returning water at the rate that I want to return it at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's my strategy. I mean, I, I think that's... Uh, I, I don't know that everybody... That I don't, one, none, of the, none of the lecture, I think, talks about establishing canopy and then talking about water deficits. When we, we've always said in California that for the most part, except for some really extreme cases, there's enough water in the soil at bloom that that's not an issue. But I think that maybe this year, maybe it, maybe it is an issue. Hmm. And depending on, on where you are. So, I, so I'm going to want to make sure that, that that's not an issue. I want to make sure I get all the fruit that I can off of here. So you're supposed to be asking questions, guys. Economics. <laughs> All these blocks. Yeah, so the two sides, we have another 20 acres to, to the south of here, which we probably aren't going to get to today. It's just, enough, it's just more grapevines. Um, we are injecting fertilizer to this port right here. That's what that is. You attach a bottle there or something? or? Uh, maybe, the, I think it might be, it might be set up over there and we can, look and we can look at it. I think it's set up over there. Okay. Uh, each block, yeah, is, is, is separately valved. And that's like a venturi, it just sucks? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And uh, in this case, the, the well's over there, and all the rest runs through other pipes. That's the way this one's set up. The other one's set up where there's a manifold right at the well, that, and each block has a separate uh, a separate pipe going to it. Uh, okay. Where this one is a common pipe, and then we valve it off here. It, it's because of the, the layout. The other one is long and narrow. We can run one pipe right down the middle that can be all of that stuff. Now, is that just all nitrogen you're putting in there, or are you doing some sort of a uh, mix? Today it's nitrogen, but it, um, we're probably going to, after bloom, what do you use to establish nitrogen? We'll, we'll see what they got in there. I was talking to them. So my role here is not to do much work, <laughs> but to say I need to I need 10 pounds per acre of nitrogen, and they said, okay, we got this one material. Okay, fine, so I'm pumping it. That's mm -hmm. I, I give the prescription. I don't I don't do the drilling. Yeah. I try to stay clean. <laughs> You're the, you're the brains, <laughs> not the brawn. <laughs> the vineyard looks really flat, though, so you don't have to worry too much about swells or how the... You'd be surprised how, flat, how unflatted it is. Uh, we have all this straw here for, for erosion. If it, if it rains pretty good, water comes streaming through here and, and really can wreck this field. I mean, it, it, it's surprising. I wouldn't have expected it without, a, without having a seen it. So you believe that... Uh even with a late rain that we had this year, mm -hmm. still it wasn't enough uh, it's water. It's very dry. It's still dry mm -hmm. because it was mm -hmm. uh, too much water in a short time, and it was surface water running out. Or? I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that part of it. But, but uh, what I do know is that I, w I would have said the same thing as you said. I would have said it just, it, it didn't rain very much, but it rained at a good time. There should be plenty of water in the soil right now. Let's let it run. It's, except I went and dug holes in the ground. There's nothing in there. Yeah. Down three feet. So you went three feet down with like a post hole digger or something. Or? We have a bucket auger. It's a oh. it's a it's a ratcheting head on. It just goes mm -hmm. down and you yep. can do that. And that like I said that one that that's four feet down. That that soil probe is sending the data to me. Mm -hmm. I can look at that. I can compare it to last year. It's is dry. Yeah. yeah. And 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 you know so there's no there's no uh, there's nothing better than walking through the soil and digging holes and yeah. whatever it is. You got to do that. The, the, you know, on the, on the website I put, a, one of the websites I gave you is Biodynamics is a hoax. I don't know if you saw that one, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, but, and so I don't, I, don't, I don't buy into it even a little bit, but the most beautiful vineyard I ever saw was Biodynamic mm -hmm. Vineyard. The most well-maintained vineyard was a Biodynamic Vineyard. Didn't have anything to do with the Biodynamics. Mm -hmm. It had, Biodynamics demands that you go into the vineyard yeah. all the freaking time. Yeah, I was going to say, it's Labor like the best thing about Biodynamics yeah, right. and why it actually is improved the quality yeah. is the fact that you spend more time in the vineyard. Right. And mm -hmm. that's the direct result. Right. Mm -hmm. so. at, at great cost, you know, mm -hmm. crews and mm -hmm. stuff, right? So. You know, you hear the story all the time because it, it's true. Uh, the vineyard managers don't never get out of their pickups. And you can't do it that way. Mm -hmm. So even, I'll be here at you know, at six o'clock at night, whatever it is, let's get on the ATV or listen, just run through the vineyards and stop here and there and look at stuff. And I, I, I enjoy it. I guess you're not going to do it if you don't enjoy it. 
Mm. But uh, you got to do it in order to really yeah. dial it in. I've had several several wineries tell me that if they had to do it all over again, they wouldn't even plant a vineyard. They'd buy all their grapes because it's so labor intensive. There's just so much work there, and you know it became more work than making wine. Right, and that's <laughs> the thing. Well, you know, we have the people that we buy grape that buy our grapes here. We have you know really tight relationships with. And they may even come in and say to us, well, we'd like to have this or this happen on this, on this vineyard. And um, we, we, so we accommodate them. As a matter of fact, if you buy grapes for three years from a grower, you can claim that vineyard as a state. So you're set. That's a TTB uh -huh. reg? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So because you are directing, you're manage, managing it, you're, yeah. you're controlling it. Mm -hmm. so. I've had a hard time conceptualizing the whole next year's bud on the bud, like being, mm -hmm. can you point that out sure. in terms of food? I think you can get the most. Yeah, that's the most See this extra, extra wire here? Mm -hmm. These guys left this one because I told them we're going to try to fill this stuff in. Uh, mm -hmm. and so they're going to tie that down, they'll, they'll head that back, and we'll get another spur position and then fill so it as in. long as capacity allows for it, you can't extend cordons. Well, I'm going to try to change capacity. Yeah. yeah. So this piece right here, this, this is last year's this shoot. Mm -hmm. So we left two. This is the basil, this is the apical. We prune to the basil at pruning time. So, we're re so this was last year. So when this winter comes by, mm -hmm. we're going to cut this off right here. We're going to leave. We're going to cut this one off right here and leave this piece. Okay. So this this piece that we're going to leave here is the equivalent of the, of this from the previous year. Sure, sure, okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And this um, there's almost no 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 ability here to be. Um, You gotta follow the rule, because <laughs> if you start using this one, before you know it, this thing's way the heck up here. It's it's a real big problem, and because um, you, you can say, well, this one's bit, this one's bigger than this one. This is probably gonna have more fruit in it because it's gonna be more healthy fruit, and probably but you can't do it. You gotta you gotta go down to this basil one at a time. Mm -hmm. Which maybe we get down to this all the way. I'll show you some really tall ones. Merlot's worse than worse than Cabernet. I don't know why. Tall one starting here. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. So these are one one fourteen there. And the, oh that's beautiful. That's one one fourteen, that's one ten R. Same planting time or oh, wow. yeah. 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 Yeah, that's a real marked mm -hmm. difference there. And but it's always a problem on the end, so it's not the mm -hmm. not, it's probably more clear than it's than it should be. Because I think if you look at the other one, the one fourteen is not gonna be as as, as short as these. The only reason to stop here is to say this is an empty field. It's an empty field because we planted it, and three years later it all turned red, and we had to pull it out. Oh. And probably going to plant it again now, but it's been empty for two years. Uh, if I was a commercial place, in my lifetime, this will never make any money. Hmm. By having planted it, spending all that time training it, not having any income. So instead, right instead, of, instead of having, uh, so instead of having fruit on the, uh, you know, in, on the third or fourth year, we're going to have fruit on the eighth or ninth year. And all that money, and all the interest on that money, goes away. So, big point. The money you spend on trellis and grapevines, that's nothing, because if you can get more fruit in the first year. To pay back in uh, money that you that deserves some interest, whether you gave it to yourself for nothing or not, you could have done something else with it, right? That's nothing. That's where you spend your money to get the fruit in the bin on the third year. That's money in the bank. Yeah. Okay. And grapevines cost three or four dollars. That's not a big deal. Put, put another one in there. And like I said before, pruning weight does not equal pruning costs. Nothing to do with each other, except for it's a crazy jungle. 
You made this comment on my midterm, I think, about per meter. Look at it per meter, mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, <clears throat> so, you know, if, if you if if you can get um, if you can get if, if you if you get uh, if you say 2.2 meters versus the 1.6 meters, for instance, and you say, well, there's less plants than 2.2, it'll be cheaper. You know, that's, that's good math money in my pocket. I can guarantee you, it will take at least another year to fill 2.2 meters than to fill 1.6 meters. And then you have that piece of that piece of wire that doesn't have any fruit on it for two years. You're yeah. screwed. Yeah. The other thing to consider is 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 uh, cordon height. So we got the vine. Uh, we'll probably have to find someone to walk around here, but just as an example. So let's say this is your vine. You, you, this is your vine that you're that you're that you're training. Uh, you two butted it. It's coming up here this year. It's uh, at some point you head it back in order to take the laterals to make the two cordons. If I head it back here, because that's where my cordon wire is, versus here, because that's where my cordon wire is, that, that could be a month difference in time. In the meantime, during this month where I'm trying to get this thing longer, this is already growing out laterals. And so at, at the end of the year, I have a more complete system at a lower height than I do at a higher height. It's money in the bank. But this, the problem, but you've got to see here, you got to worry about the guys that are working in your vineyard. Yeah, they got to bend over, okay. it's back, back yeah. again. So yeah. let's make this comfortable for everybody, but as low as you can get it. Hmm. That that third year, that's 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 where that's that's. <laughs> and you talking about compounding that money all the way off to the twenty-five year old vineyard? That's huge. Are you doing all hand harvesting in here then? With we are, but that's not that common around. I mean, we most, are. Most of them are mechanized, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of them are mechanized. Yeah. Especially this, these sort of the pygmy vines, as I say, they're mechanized. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's amazing what harvesters do these days. They yeah. plant that the, the the fruit is beautiful, clean. The vines are not damaged or broken at all. You can't even tell they went through there. Yeah. Opus will pick some of that stuff at <coughs> night at nighttime. Opus is picking it with the machines. It just kind of shakes I them. Can't they even look tell a little unless I can walk in there and see all oh, the fruit's gone. They look a little molested or something. They don't like look it. molested. Really? Yeah. No. Hmm. Uh -uh. They used to. I saw. Yeah, the, we were up. Where was that? It was uh, up Highway Five, and uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Mary uh, No, Gary Ross's. Yeah. Yeah. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. So since I hadn't taken this course, mm -hmm. I have a three-year-old vineyard, mm -hmm. and what I did was let them grow up, and then I laid it down, uh -huh. and that's one cord on. Right. And then I did, and then I, then I had a spur to come off the other way, and that's my second cord on. Mm -hmm. So instead of heading them and having that come out, so I mean, is that what's that going to do? I don't like that. I, uh, <laughs> different ages, and this is always going to be more powerful. The one, the one you laid down. Lower. Mm -hmm. I don't have any yeah. problem. Well, I don't have any problem doing a unilateral cord on, uh -huh. where where I just you take what you did and you lay it off toward that vine, right. and you go all the way to this vine, and this one lays off and goes all the way to that vine. That one lays down and goes all that way to that vine. You can do that. But to use uh, one main shoot and one lateral is probably not a good idea. Yeah. And one is more strong. Than yeah. The other. Always, it's going to be forever. Yeah. How would you rectify that? Just cut it off. <laughs> Start over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cut them both off. Sadly. Yeah. yeah. Could you cut off the uh, the lateral one and then grow the other cord on? No, because it, 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 then whatever you have is still goes, the next one's going to be weaker than the, that one is. Basically, I mean, yeah. you cut it off, you'll get all kind of crap come out of it, and then you can train something out. Yeah, so what happens if you just, like, you take the example, just cut these back, like, how does it... There, there will be more shoots than you can believe come out of that trunk. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. there, that whole trunk is just full, buried with buds all inside of there. Yeah, so you cut, cut down any point, really. Cut down an oak tree, yeah. end up with, like, 18 right. trees. You can't cut yeah. fast Even redwoods do this. Right, right. Yeah. This, is, this is scion. Yeah. Right. But if you just cut it here, it'll grow. Yeah. And then you can start training the new new cordons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was surprised that nobody commented, just for the sake of the comment, uh, about the smuggled wood. But not nobody, but very few people commented about the smuggled wood. Yeah. From, uh, I think that's like, that's what we like. Did I, didn't we talk about this as being a bad idea? We just talked about <laughs> viruses and stuff. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, what are they doing? Oh, well, I guess he wants an answer anyway. So. Well, so, well, the, the, yeah. well. I don't, I don't know what to, I, I have to be honest yeah, yeah. with you, that's, I started out with an exam, that wasn't my exam, I don't know where that exam came yeah. from, but when I started grading it, I said, oh shit, what, what is this? 
and, and so the other instructor, I don't, I, I bet, somehow or another that her, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, but I, so I, I kept on asking myself, I wonder what she wanted here. And so I didn't take anybody, I don't, I didn't nail anybody for that. I just surprised somebody to say, tell them no, okay, but you got to do it. Here's what I would do. Yeah. How would you deal with it? Yeah. I would have given you all the points and said, screw it. I, I, run those I'm down not going to deal with this owner. Run those down to <laughs> foundation plant services and get them to do some uh, heat treatment on them. Well, then you need a paycheck. So. <laughs> <laughs> you always need a paycheck. <laughs> Is there ever a time where I mean they're they're strong enough and you don't need that? Or? They are now. Yeah, but I don't. It, it wouldn't cost me. It wouldn't pay me any money to go in and get them out of there. Yeah, to reuse Sorry, them. They're in place if you have to cut out that vine for the next one. There you go. Yeah. Good point. This is material that was tested, and we uh, one of the there, there are guys actually make their living in California, uh, visiting nurseries on your behalf, and charging a dollar a plant or something like that in order to you know do the analysis and do some make makes be ensured that it's at the at, at, that that helps, but it doesn't solve the problem. You know we are stuck with this idea of only being able to look for uh, viruses that we know about. So if, if something else happens, and that's what happens in nature new things show up all the time we can't find it we declare it being clean and it comes out red these vines were all passed all the pcr tests it's frightening placer uh, ag uh, they had a uh, european moth yeah. warning that people are i guess are experiencing up in that area where placer you have there now too apparently grapevine. Yeah, yeah european yeah, grapevine. Couple years, they yeah. Come there. Yeah, we pretty much got rid of it here. did you yeah, yeah. Just with pesticides, or yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I mean, we didn't find hardly any last year. Uh, Pope Valley is trying to get out completely from the regulation to get rid of the quarantine because they, they didn't. So there's a process to do, but we really they're almost all the way gone. The ag commissioner told me that he'd bring over traps and they'd set them up in my uh, good, yeah, my vineyard, yeah, yeah, yeah. where well, it should be, yeah. I mean, it should be so there's. If, 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 it, if it is declared to be there, then there's a prescription about how many traps per square mile or per mm -hmm. 10 square miles or mm -hmm. whatever it is that, the, that they should be following in order to know what it is yeah. county-wide. Yep. The Monitor their levels. Yeah. 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 So this is a much older vineyard. This is a combination of rootstocks. Uh, a lot of work's being done in here on different kind of... Um, for management, looking at carbon sequestration in a, in a vineyard, or how much carbon gets used, it's kind of interesting. So, so you see, these are much bigger vines than this 101 we're looking for. This is all tree. Th th these are th these older, and they're one can are here. Um, these ones here that are much shorter, and we have spaces in the. I can't really about this because this is a, a, a vineyard that has lots of different rootstocks in it, so I can't really change capacity for these rootstocks, not those ones, because it's just I I, I can, but I, I'm not going to. Okay, I don't have to bother with it. The big, the big spaces. Um, this is uh, 428. So there are a few rootstocks that really behave uh, differently. Many of them are very similar. But for instance, 428 is a small plant, almost always, and then 110R, 140, 1103 are big ones. And the rest of them in the middle. What's the rootstock behind you here? 110. This is 110R? Yeah, because that's. Wow. How, how old do you think that is? These are about the. I think these are 18 or 19 years old. They seem pretty vigorous. They yeah. have all the... Right. Yeah. yeah, ours vineyard is about 30 years old, and they're even bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a, you know, I really, I, 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 mean, I shouldn't go on to this because it's kind of emotional. I'm just disgusted with 101.14. I just, just don't like it. Mm -hmm. I, it seems like either I read or somebody told me that after about 50 years, you're done, you got to start over. You get 50 years out of a vineyard, you, you did really, really well. Yeah. That's, 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 I can't, I, I, would, I never would expect, I would never budget more than 25. 25, yeah. If, if I'm going to project out what I'm going to replace a vineyard. But of course, it's dependent on variety. Zinfandel is going to be a lot older than Cabernet. Yeah, old wine zins, that's what everybody what is, what's likes. What's the difference huh? that, biologically? 
you typer. Yeah. Yeah, Zinfandel doesn't get you typer and uh, uh So it's really just disease resistance and also yeah, being hit by big key philosophy. No, no, fox will kill it. Yeah. So that's that's all on the roots. So th this is uh this is the type of uh, remedial work, right? We're retraining a new one because we cut it off because of you type of cut this cord on off. There's a new one being trained out. Same here, we cut this one off. We got two two coming out of this one. And yeah, you can see what's going on. It's a little way off right there. Wow. My suppose here is that this is not Utypa, this is Botrysphyria, which grows very quickly and kills, compl kills complete spurs. But in either case, it's the same remedy. I'm going to have to cut it out. But if you've got that many killed ones, they wouldn't have noticed this last year. This all happened in one year. Wow. It's, got, it's got to go. As, as opposed to... This is a severe type of one here. Mm -hmm. So the guys notice that and we'll be removing it downstream someplace. Mm -hmm. It always goes this it always goes that way. It never goes this way. You have about uh, gophers here? So it's, yeah, yes. So this is a, this is a you type of shoot also, but it's not nearly as severe. You can see this, you, you, this little distortion on this leaf right here, and this one here. Those are you type of. And then down in here, there's some little ones. That are, this this is more severe here. And so the guys got. I mean, these guys that work here are just are just fantastic. So you'll cut it back by two first. I don't, well, I'm trying. My guess is we're going to go all the way back. To, we're going to cut it all the way off. Let's right. see this one right here. The guys left that one when they were thinning. This is going to be the new one to go across here. So, they just saw that, and then mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that got us a ribbon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I, I I cannot tell you enough how viable these guys are. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I if I had to do that, I probably wouldn't. Uh, and um, really time consuming. Yeah. I mean, it's, they're thinning anyways. They got they got the tape in their pocket. They're 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 tagging as they go. Now is that why they left you this down here? Mm -hmm. And that one up there, more specifically, I think this is, this is the one that, that, that is going to go on there. Okay. See, they have a tape around it here to mm -hmm. support it. To make that, that, that's just making sure it doesn't get broken off of the wind or something like that. That 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 really indicating that that's safe. That's a safe shoot. I see. Yeah. So then, you know, that's the same. There's a remedial thing there. That's that's a new one coming out. And so, will there be a different in terms of the fruit that comes from this side and then this one is trained? I mean, five years from now, will there be probably difference? Yeah, because it's a younger core. Well, there are a lot of people, you know, whatever. It, 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 I, I, I'm going to say, like, I'm guessing at this, but this is what I've been saying for a long time. I probably have 5 to 7% of the vineyard always in some kind of transition, transition being done like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so I don't know how old the vineyard really is because... Yeah. Um, and <laughs> It's all relative. <laughs> and I, I, I really think, like, you know, the year 5, year 6, that's really the best, that's beautiful fruit. You get older. You get oh, wow, you can see more. see right here where they, you, you lost the whole. Yeah, they cut the whole trunk off there. Trunk off there yeah. and started over. And trained, so they trained it up to the something that they say. They came up as, as if they were training something new. Yeah. So, then there you go. We needed to have that, something to support that as we trained it up. You wouldn't have had if we had pulled all the stakes up. So, in my area, we have a lot of gophers. That's why I asked. Uh, what do you use for gopher management? I asked Donna and... Rhonda and they were like, uh, traps. Storm. It's what all traps. Yeah. Well, yeah. they were they were saying don't use chemicals and stuff like that. You know, there are sprays you can get them to, to leave, but well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, flame yeah, yeah, flamethrower. Uh, no, no, they put it on, they ignite pump, it, and they pump blow it in it, there, blow it up. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, until you get the like a. Tr People have done it, and then all then you cut trees on fire because 
you know where that tube goes, and then you got, and the whole tree goes goes up. One of my neighbors used to sit out there early in the morning with a shotgun. <laughs> he just wade around a you know a little mound and I got hear a him feeling, wham. I, I, got that, I got a feeling he was entertained, but he didn't do very much to affect the gopher population. Yeah, probably right. not. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just in my garden, I use a lot of uh, castor oil and then granular form, which actually is a deterrent. Really? Yeah. Huh. They, they hate the smell, so they go elsewhere. They didn't plant mints. They just, they just move out. Too, huh? and they yeah. just they don't like mint, so it's mm. that. Working more in that integrated pest management kind of thing, like mm-hmm. certain things that deter them, uh-huh. seem to work better than actually trying to sulfur bombs and things like kill that. Them, yeah. Kill them, the yeah. Kill them. Yeah. seem to work better. Yeah. So. And it's too toxic to take the other route, probably. Yeah. It seems like there's more spaces in here. Is that on purpose? Oh yeah. Good? No, I don't know. There, yeah. there could have been one there. They didn't keep it. I don't. Know, you know. For some reason, there's, there's, there's all maybe it broke off and then there wasn't there. I mean, you know, it's, it's hard to go back and say what the decision was made a long time ago. Mm-hmm. So, certainly, our goal is to have. What I would say, you know, a rhythmic spacing of birth position go along the wire, not just around the, the plant. So when the two plants come together, I don't want two, two like this, and I also don't want them like that. I mm-hmm. want to just continue that same rhythm as you go down the line. So you don't seem to be re- replacing these at all. I've seen other vineyards where they, you know, they'll crane out another piece and lop that guy off because they're getting too long. Okay, what's the problem then? <laughs> what, what, why am I not doing that? Oh, the type of. The type of. I want to make as few small cuts as possible, big cuts as possible. Exactly. Ten points. So otherwise, you would. Ask more. Right. Who says that's not? Yeah. Wrong time of the season. So this reddish coloring we're seeing on the. Shit tips, that's normal. Yeah. It's also variety. Dependent, yeah. yeah. Some varieties are different colors. I mean, that temp- Tempranillo is very, uh, I would say, like bronzy or co- coppery. Uh huh. The, the dormant wood's different colors too. Like this one goes very light in color, and Cabernet's very dark in color. And if you, and if you, if you prune uh, 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 several different varieties, there are different densities, and some of them, your hand gets tired faster than other ones because the woods are different. Oh, wow. What are your thoughts on uh, head pruning for Zinfandel? And then we'll put this up. So how often will you come in and dig holes? I mean, from a research perspective? I mean, every two years, three. I'm, I'm done for a while, I think, right now. Um, I'm going to know that I need water in some of these blocks and I'm going to pour it onto it. Pour um, I, I know once the soil is dry, it's dry. Right. It's not going to get wet again. But other sort of elements and soil reports, I think, like, how often does it change, actually? How often what? It changes year to year. I mean, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I think I guess a lot of what what, what we're trying to right, do is as viticulturists, right, is is to, is to really be aware of what what's happening this year versus next year, and trying not to be too overly prescriptive in what we do, right? mm-hmm. recipe driven. And you can only do that. And I, I think this is I think this is this with wine making too, right? Wine making is very very simple. People do it in the garages all over the place, right? All the time. They make some very nice wines. What they can't do is change something that's screwed up. And so the knowledge that you collect allows you to, to you know, cipher through whatever different nuances come to you and still create something that's good. So you might say, like a dry farm vineyard, okay? They, they don't have nothing to do anymore. Yeah. They, just, they, just, they just walk away from it and it's done. They don't they can't change it. I don't think it's such a good idea, but... There's no opportunity to, now I can see, this. okay, I, I, I'm, I don't want that kind of canopy. This is 101 14 again versus what we saw before. I think i got to get some more gas on this in this, in this tank, and I can, I can do it. But if you, uh, but I'm able to think about that, right? I say, okay, what are the things I can do to change the capacity? You know, when, when would I want to apply, when, when, what stage of growth would I want to do that? How does, a, how does uh, adding nitrogen affect fruit set? All that stuff is very, very important. 
you know, if you don't have that, that background, you, you, you can't make that decision. Mm -hmm. You know, like adding SO2 even just to wine, something as simple as that. If you don't understand the relationship between pH and, and, and the effectiveness of SO2, you just, you just like, I guess, well, people say, well, you know, I, every time I rack it, I add 50 parts. I say, why? You know? I've talked to people like that, and I just right, right. laugh. Well, you know, it probably works most of the time, <laughs> except for the time you end up with some vinegar or something like that. Yeah, because your pH was 3.9 yeah, or 4 right. or something. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> so I guess the difference. So this is, I guess the fertilizer, the port would have been over there, so the guy's not here adding it, so we can't watch it. But uh, we're oh. putting fertilizer in this one today. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then as soon as we get fruit set, we'll come mm. through here and pull these off. And I ran this one for eight hours last night, and, you know, I made it up. I just wanted to put a lot of water in it. But those emitters are just, I mean, it's really dripping. It's, it's not pouring water on there. I've right. seen some vineyards up in uh, Auburn area where they took the emitters off, and they just have tubes. That's their drip system, so I guess they're just really gushing water in there. Whatever, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that because it's what, what that's going to. One of the things that the drip emitters do is allow there to be a constant pressure. You're a physicist so in the all, line. So all of the emitters yeah. have yeah the same pressure. Right. Yeah, they are pressure compensating emitters, but yeah. none of them were a hundred percent on that. Yeah, I mean you just have water pouring out. By the time you get to the end of the line, it's not going to be coming out. Yeah, or much less. There's a lot of uh, maintenance though with well water. Either that or you have to have a really good filtration system. Well, that's it. They gave up. They couldn't. They, they gave up because they kept on clogging their lines. Is that what you're saying? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have to do a flush on our lines every year. We start with the line open and turn each one on. Yeah, we no, no. That's section. what the guys, are, the guys are going through, checking all the emitters. Yeah. They're cleaning all the screens. Every line has a filter on it. And, the, and we have a sand filter here. So this is, this is the... That's the your filtration here. system over here? Yeah, we're pumping out of this reservoir here. Oh wow! I really can't. Okay. <laughs> Those are the ones they brought back from Mars. <laughs> Not my experiment. <laughs> this. You, so you pump water from a well into here? This, this is water that's captured from the drainage system. Oh. Okay. You said you had the sump pump. It, pump yeah, you pump it here. back into here. Right. So you reuse the water. Yeah. And yeah. do you think this water, because of uh, doing fertigation and such, then is uh, more nutrient rich than like your well water or something? It too? should be. It should have more it, nitrogen. It can at be. Least, yeah. I mean, th these these guys here, this this is uh, Zola. It's a weed we're going to try to get rid of. It, it wasn't here two years ago. Now it's, co it's covering up the whole thing. Yeah. And it's actually fixing nitrogen. In there. This will turn into a meadow eventually yeah. if you don't do something about it. Yeah. So we're going to have to spray some Roundup in there. Mm -hmm. Rodeo. Aquatic around it. Yeah. 